to the power minus 1. Okay? But normally, more commonly, SVR is expressed in CGS, uh, CGS unit. That is times per second per centimeter to the power 5. Sheta ki kore hai? Because 1 millimeter marker means Tarashotirish dines per square centimeter. Okay. And cardiac output is, will be expressed as centimeter to the power 3 per second. That is 5 liter per minute. So, in CGS unit, it will be centimeter gram second. So, centimeter to the power cube per second. So, if you ask me, I mean, the SVR will be expressed in the dines, in the CGS unit, it will be dines per second per centimeter to the power 5. Isn't it? Is it clear? Why is centimeter to the power 5? See, MAP minus CVP by cardiac output. Right? So, it amra express kochi millimeter of marker it. And it amra express kochi it. Right? So, if I millimeter of marker it, Shetaka will replace Kochi the dines the dines per square centimeter, CJS a Galeaki. So it will be dines per square centimeter. Basically, square centimeter Ekanacholas Bagale, then by by equal to Nichicholas Bay. Dines per square centimeter. Our Tashate Ekanat the cardiac output taken at Chiracom. So it will be. Cube centimeter per second. Taleta ki holo. So it will be dines. Taleta centimeter to the power 5 into sec. Tamana holo get dines per second minus 5. 2 plus 3. Eh? eh? Na dines by second. See, millimeter of marker means dines per square centimeter. Okay, so dines by square centimeter. Okay, so that's my dines by square centimeter like this. Dines by square centimeter. That's the cardiac output by cardiac output. That's in each other. So cardiac output is expressed as centimeter cube by second. So dines ta hobe tale centimeter two plus three five. By second, so dines per second per square centimeter to the power 5 minus 5. Got it? How is derived? Just change the unit. It was millimeter per carry by that one. ML per minute, we are expressing as centimeter cube by second. So normal SVR is like this 900 to say 1440. Is it clear? Huh? MAP minus CVP by cardiac output. That is a that's a crux. So the calculation will come in the dines per second per centimeter to the power five. Is it clear? Huh? Okay. So this is SVR. So now, tell me what will happen if there is vasoconstrictions. If the vessel constricts, there will be vasoconstriction, vessel dilates, it will be vasodilatation. So what will happen to the SVR? If there is vasoconstriction, what will happen? Resistance will increase. And if there is vasodilatation, SVR will, will get de uh, decreased. So very important. Now come to the shock. Okay. Achha. Uh, regarding this, this is the resistance. There is one formula. What is this? HP formula. Hmm? Physics 11-12. What's that? Hegen. Hegen Poisson's formula. What does it say?
what is this r for resistance 8 ln what is l length what is n viscosity of the fluid pi into r to the power 4 r is this r is radius okay okay so more see this is a this is a length and this is a length so if i squeeze again from squeeze from this end if i squeeze the upper or the lower where i need more resistance where i will feel more resistance the lower one because i have to press longer to reach there so as the length increases the resistance will be more this one where the resistance will be more the upper one or lower one upper one because it's smaller so i need more resistance if it's a bigger quickly it will come out huh? so resistance will be more in the constricted one and if the radius is x and this is 2x the change of resistance will be to the power 2 to the power 4 this is x radius this is 2x that means double okay so resistance will be r to the power 4 to 2 to the power 4 so 16 times if the vessel uh, vessel radius is halved the resistance will be 16 times higher because this is a mathematical formula and n is the viscosity say through it if i i mean want to uh, eject in one uh, scenario is water and in one scenario is honey which will require more force honey because that's more viscous it don't come out easily so i need more pressure more squeeze isn't it so more viscous more we need uh, more the resistance i will feel okay so this is the basics this physiology you must know okay now come to the pathology so what is shock in one word what is shock what is shock huh? Huh? okay okay hypoxia of the tissues that is the most important whatever may be the cause oxygen uh, metabolism by oxygen dynamics the cell needs oxygen okay so that's the thing shock is state of cellular or tissue hypoxia that may happen in different way by reduce do2 do2 means oxygen delivery so reduce do2 or it can happen increase oxygen consumption by the why the cell is taking increase i mean extracting more oxygen because he is not getting enough so he's trying to extract more so shock may be because of reduced delivery or increase oxygen consumption or oxygen has been provided but the cell cannot use the oxygen so inadequate oxygen utilization or combination of any of these so combination of any of these can produce a state of cellular hypoxia so shock means hypoxia at the cellular level that's the most important thing whatever may be the way inadequate cellular supply of oxygen cellular oxygen that may be because of inadequate supply or inadequate utilization or maybe increased extraction okay so it, most commonly it will be manifested as hypotension most commonly is some circulatory failure hypotension that is the most common but remember patient in shock they may be hypotensive they may be normotensive also sometimes even they may be hypertensive also shock has different stages i will take it in the next class different stages okay so everything can happen is shock doesn't mean hypotension every time that is the most common presentation hypotension but a patient who is non-potensive can have shock okay because shock has different stages that that's the our next uh, lecture okay so that is very important you must remember a patient hypotension is the most common presentation but a patient of shock may be non-potensive even if hyper even hypertensive also okay so normal bp doesn't mean doesn't exclude shock I and mean, if i ask the take home message from this slide 
there are two lines. Shock means state of cellular hypoxia and second, normal, I mean normal blood pressure does not exclude shock. These are the two most important lines of these slides. Okay. Because shock has different stages, compensated, uncompensated, even in compensated stage, patient may look normal, look normal otherwise, parameter wise, but not at cellular level. Okay. So, <clears throat> why shock is important? Because effects of shock, they are initially reversible. But if you don't intervene in this stage, it will rapidly become irreversible. Irreversible means there will be multi organ dysfunction, failure, eventually death. Okay, death of the cell, more cells die, more organs will fail, ultimately the patient will die. Okay. So when a patient presents to you, that time she is an undifferentiated shock. Your job is to identify what type of shock it is. You have to start therapy that way. You have to reverse shock and you have to prevent multi-organ failure and ultimately you have to prevent death of the patient. Okay. So now what are the types of shock? What are the types of shock? This is okay, clear? Okay. Now, what are the types of shock? These are the <coughs> four types. Distributive shock. What are the examples of distributive shock? Two or three. One is one I have already written. Septic shock, that is the most common type of distributive shock. Okay. Another example. Anaphylaxis. This is also a type of distributive shock. Then cardio then next common is the hypovolemic shock. This is the most common, this is the second most common, then the cardiogenic, then the obstructive shock. Okay. Now, what are those? This is a normal situation, normal. Now, if we uh, talk about hypovolemic shock, this is a normal situation. Just remember heart, artery, big arteries, arterioles, venules big veins. Okay. This is the normal one. So now if I talk about hypotensive shock, who is at failure? How it happens? This is the heart. What is the normal cardiac output? 5 liters. Okay, 5 liters normally. So, hypotension means 5 liter cardiac output. It has a hypotensive shock. Suppose there is a road traffic accident. What do we do normally? We lose blood. That may be from here, that may be from here, that may be from both, both artery, vein, right? So some blood will be lost, some blood will be lost from here. So suppose if we lose say 2 liters of blood, some road traffic accident we have lost 2 liters of blood, 
Okay. So, now what will be the effective blood volume from 5 liter to? What will be the effective blood volume from 5 liter to? So, this is this is a normal situation, this is a normal condition. So, there will be 5 liter of cardiac output. But if I lost 2 liters is out, so the effective blood volume will be 3 liters. So, hypovolume means there is some volume loss. That is usually blood, but it may be may not be blood also. What how what are the other mechanisms by which we can lose fluid? What are the other mechanisms by which we lose fluid? Huh? Vomiting, diarrhea, because we have uh, volumes, we have water also, no? Huh? So, majority, I mean, if we uh, have more bowel movements, so some amount of, good amount of fluid will be lost if we vomit. In that way also, we can be dehydrated. We lose our, our blood volume is okay, but we are losing fluid. We get hypovolemic. So, there is a water balance also. So, most commonly hypovolemic shock is because of bleeding, but also it can happen with vomiting and diarrhea. Okay. Suppose some patient has intestinal obstruction or some patient has acute pancreatitis. Okay. Each of them will be, I mean, may, may cause hypovolemic shock in a different way. Road traffic accident, just because of loss of blood, acute pancreatitis, because of the heart space loss. When I will, I mean, take class on acute pancreatitis, I will teach that. It will be a heart space loss. Okay. Water from the vascular compartment will leak to the extra vascular space. That won't be available to us. Okay. So, if blood is less, 3 liters, what will happen to the preload? What will happen to preload? Hmm? What will happen? Blood from three liter hai gachi. Hey, commonly, kya hai? Preload kya hai? Come ja hai. So less blood is available. So less blood will reach heart. So what heart will do? Heart will try to maintain maintain its cardiac output. That's the I mean by nature body will try to maintain homeostasis. So what will be the response then? Then how heart can achieve this goal? Yes, because stroke volume will be less. Less blood is reaching. So with each contraction, less blood will be pumped. So he heart will increase the rate. So, clinically it will be like, if you see the pulse, it will be tachycardia. Okay. So, this is the hypovolemic shock. Volume loss, volume failure. Okay. Now, what is cardiogenic shock then? What is cardiogenic shock? The name suggests itself. Oh, what is it? Stroke volume depends on preload, contractility, afterload. So now, who is at failure? Contractility is So who is responsible? The heart. Huh? Suppose a patient has AMI. Okay. So, the heart is the culprit. Who is the culprit? This is the culprit. Heart. If it, if it can't pump adequately, how will you have, what will you have? Blood won't reach the circle, I mean, in the aorta. It won't reach the organs. The cells won't get uh, oxygen, isn't it? So, the cardiogenic shock means the heart is at fault. So, it is the failure of the 
function of the heart. That may happen if you have AMI or if you have tachyarrhythmias, okay. Some patient is having ventricular ectopics, okay, ventricular tachycardia or atrial fibrillation where the heart, have you, I mean read it in physiology, atrial fibrillation, have you heard? Atrial fibrillation, that means heart rate is too high, there is no effective contraction, okay. So any tachyarrhythmias, any um, AMI where the heart muscle has gone, so they won't be able to pump adequate amount of blood, okay. So that's the cardiogenic shock. Okay, now what is distributive shock? What is distributive shock? Heart is okay here. But if you see, This is a normal thing. This is a distributive thing. Ki difference between one and the Ki difference one and the Dilatation. There is excessive dilatation, vasodilatation here. Okay. So, what will happen to the SVR? SVR will be very low. Huh? So, distributive shock is main here. This is the, these are capacitance vessels, no? There will be peripheral pulling of blood, huh? So, there will be much dilatation, peripheral dilatation. So, everything will be pulled here, okay? Everything will be pulled here. P-double-O-L-E-D, pulled, not pull, P-U-L, P-U-double-L, not that. P-double-O-L, pulled. So, everything will be staggered here, okay? So, the SVR will be less in distributive shock, okay, fine. So, that is the distributive shock. Typical example is septic shock, also happens in anaphylactic shock and some neurogenic shock also. And the last one is obstructive shock, which is most rare, I mean, <coughs> among these four, there is the rarest. So, what is distributive shock? Uh, sorry, what is uh, obstructive shock? Where is the obstruction? Where is the obstruction? What is this? Have you heard of venous thromboembolism? What's that? What's that? What is this? Hmm? Have you heard venous thromboembolism? Where does thrombus form normally? First, legs, very common. If you are immobile, very commonly there is leg thrombus, which can dislodge and come go back, go to pulmonary artery. So what will happen if some thrombus is lost in the pulmonary artery and it blocks the way of pulmonary artery? So even if heart pumps, will it be able to pump blood to the lungs? Will it get oxygen then? No. So that's the obstructive pattern, that's the obstructive shock, pulmonary embolism or even if some, see heart is in a pouch, it's called pericardium. So if there is some fluid collection in the pericardium, it will have a which effect? In a medical term, tell me, suppose heart is in a pouch, pericardium, 
if there is some collection, some fluid in the pericardium, effusion, okay, fine. The effluent is a tamponade effect, okay. So, pericardial tamponade, if the pericardial tamponade is there, heart won't be able to pump. So, these are the features of the obstructive shock, okay. So, this is the main four types of shock. So, distributory shock most common, classic example is sepsis, also happens in anaphylaxis, some, sometimes also neurogenic shock, second most common, second most common, hypovolemic shock, third, cardiogenic shock, least common, obstructive shock, okay. So, who are that fault in hypovolemic shock, who is at failure, the volume, in cardiogenic shock, who is the culprit, heart. In distributive shock, who is at fault? The system, the pipe system, vasodilatation, less SVR. That's most important, less SVR, huh? because of the vasodilatation, okay. So, there is pulling and obstructive. So, the outflow of the, outflow of the heart, okay, that may be in the pulmonary artery or maybe the heart itself because heart is in the pouch. So, if there is tamponade, heart cannot pump, okay. So, these are the basic four types of shock, clear. So, now if I look at it, distributive shock, there is vasodilatation, both arterial and venous. This is the normal, this is the distributive, okay. So, because of this pulling, there is relative inadequacy of intravascular volume, okay cause sepsis, anaphylaxis, neurogenic. So, blood pools in the venous capacitance vessels, <coughs> veins are more capacitance vessels, yeah? you know? capacitance vessels are mostly vein. So, if they dilates, they will have good amount of uh, blood pooled in them. So, there will be relative preload ki have, again preload will come down because blood is pooled there, okay. So, hypovolemia. So, volume is lost. So, decrease intravascular volume. It will reduce preload, ventricular filling and stroke volume. Cardiogenic. So, there is reduction in the cardiac output because primary cardiac disorder, okay, and obstructive. The interference filling or emptying of the heart or the great vessels. Some mechanical factors like as I told you, okay. So, now if you see uh, this thing. Arterial pressure is blood pressure or the mean arterial pressure is cardiac output into SVR, okay. And cardiac output depends on stroke volume and heart rate. Stroke volume depends on preload, afterload, contractility. So, in hypervolume, typically preload is less. Cardiogenic, typically contractility is less. Obstructive. Somewhere here it is, I mean, uh, impaired and distributive, that is vasodilatory. So, that means SVR will be at fault. So, SVR will be much less, okay. Stages and uh, this thing will I will take on the next class. Huh? So, read these things, get very concepts clear. So, uh, if I ask you, stages and clinical features are in the next next one. But still, just uh, I mean, st uh, still I have time, five minutes. So, their initial compensatory, okay, then progressive, then irreversible. This is the stage where in the compensatory stage, patient may look normal. That means BP may be normal. When it's progressive, definitely BP will fall and irreversible means in spite of the support, you cannot jack up the BP, okay. So, very early signs, I mean, of shock will be increasing because at the cellular level, the changes have become, I mean, have started at the cellular level. So, what is at cellular level? 
the metabolism is changing from aerobic to anaerobic. Once it's anaerobic, it starts accumulating lactic acids. So a patient may look normal, okay? The BP may be normal, but if we do the ABG, arterial blood gas analysis, lactic acid will be more. So in a sick patient, you always, that's why you ask for an EBG, arterial blood gas analysis, okay? So if I see that lactate is more, that means something is not right at the cellular level. That may not be evident in the blood pressure or uh, this thing, but something is at fault at the cellular level, okay? So progressive means when the compensatory mechanism fails. And irreversible means obviously there is organ failure then. Then you cannot revive the patient. So, you know the basic, uh, I mean, what are the basic pathophysiology of the four types? So, in one word, if we express like this, distributive means vasodilatation. No, this is dilatation. So, SVR will come down. So, low SVR. So, what is the cornerstone of therapy? What will be the cornerstone of therapy? What you have to give? Vasopressors. So that the, I mean, vasopressors. Okay, so that the vessel constricts and SVR rises. So cornerstone will be vasopressor. You have to give IV fluids, everything. Huh? If you have sepsis, you have to give antibiotics, everything. But the cornerstone, you have to revert this pathology. You have to give vasopressor. Okay. So if someone gives you an MCQ, say what is most important for treating uh, uh, this thing. Apart from all these, vasopressor is a must. That's the first thing, okay? You have to give fluids and antibiotics as an adjunct. So hypovolemia, that means main problem, preload is less, so there will be low CVP. So you have to give fluids, and if it is a hemorrhagic, then you have to give blood, okay? Cardiogenic, there is low cardiac output. Heart is at fault. So primary therapy will be ionotropes, which increases the contract rate of the heart, not vasopressors, contract rate of the heart, ionotropes. And obstructives, you have to identify the cause. Say if it is a pulmonary embolism, you have to do an embolectomy. Or if it is a pericardial tamponade, you have to take out the fluid or so remove the cause, identify the cause and remove the cause. But in nutshell, this is the primary problem of this type of shocks, and this is the cornerstone of therapy. So next class, it will be stages of shock, clinical features of shock, and the treatment. Okay, is it clear? Huh? So be conceptual and try to solve some of the MCQs on uh, shock. Okay, so there are different platforms. So, so that will, once you um, try to answer those, huh, it will say, I always say, uh, read Emily type books. Emily type books, if you try to solve, they are very much conceptual. The questions, they are very much conceptual. There are basic difference in the Indian types of exams and the uh, US Emily type of exams. Indian exams are more likely, more, I mean, uh, memory based. What is the most common, which are least common, this is this. But usually Emily type questions, they are more concept based. There is a usual clinical vignette. This is India is also changing. But if you try to solve US type of questions, conceptually it will be better, okay?